TV presenter Kate Garraway says the cost of care for her late husband, Derek Draper, has left her with enormous debts. The Good Morning Britain presenter acknowledges she does have a well-paid job, but says she and her family have been left at crunch point due to medical and care expenses. Kate has revealed that it cost around £16,000 a month, which is much more than her ITV salary, to care for her husband, Derek Draper, who died in January, age 56, from the long-term effects of COVID. Joining me now to discuss this, NHS GP Dr Ellie Cannon. Dr Cannon, thank you so much for joining me. I think people will be astounded at the cost of £16,000 a month and they will wonder why, if Derek Draper needed round-the-clock care for so many different issues and problems and concerns, why he wasn't in a hospital, why he was at home being cared for at Kate Garraway's expense and his own, rather than in hospital being cared for by the NHS at their expense? Well, this is, this is the difference between the care system and the NHS. So a hospital is not providing care. Hospitals provide treatment, um, and obviously included within that is care. But in terms of long-term care, um, that is provided by social care, which for most people is provided either privately through their own funds, as Kate has spoken about, or through the social care budgets, which actually come from the councils from the boroughs where you live. Yes. So that isn't actually coming from the NHS, although obviously the two do work together. So there wouldn't be the facility for somebody um, like Derek to have been in hospital per se. There may have been the facility for him to have been in some sort of care home um, but obviously the family choice was there for him to be in his own home, which was right for them. So that's where the costs were coming from. And, and, and so if he had been Derek Draper in different circumstances, so let's say, for example, he had been a single man with no one to care mm. for him, mm. or, he, or he had been um, either on benefits or unemployed or earning very little or from a family with very little money at all, what happens then? So that scenario will be very familiar to people. So I look after patients who are in that exact scenario and they are looked after by the social care system. So that may mean um, a state-funded um, care home, either uh, residential care, nursing care, that type of thing, or having live-in carers or four or six times a day carers within his own home, which would have been paid for by the local um, social care budget. And, and, so, and so it's decided, is it, that on an income-based uh, system, you either do have you know, kind of full access to whatever social care can provide or you pay yourself and the costs are absolutely exorbitant. I mean, you might say prohibitive, but Kate Garraway obviously wanted her husband to be at home and she wanted to be there caring for him and providing the care that he needed. But she's, she's said to mm. be in something like £800,000 worth of debt. Mm. Yeah, so there's, it's not all means tested. So people with significant disabilities, as Derek had, are entitled to certain things that are not means tested, for example, things like attendance allowance, things like um, DLA, and the care that is provided if somebody has those needs would not be means tested. But obviously, in terms of what people want and what people sort of have the right to choose is obviously going to be different on the basis of how much money people have and they can sort of lay out and depending what the, the family want to do. Um, but, I mean, this isn't surprising to me. Um, I looked after a family member last year um, who was in residential care for dementia. Um, and the costs are absolutely staggering. They're absolutely staggering, phenomenal. You can't even imagine along the lines of what Kate is talking about. And, and, and so, and so when, when we hear of, of patients staying in hospital beds that really should be vacated for patients because mm. the social care structure, mm. system, you know, facility is somehow not in place for them to be able to mm. leave hospital, is this partly what we're talking about? This is absolutely partly what we're talking about, the resources in terms of the finances, but also the resources in terms of the people to do the caring, all the space within facilities if somebody is going 
to a care home or a nursing home. So absolutely, this is this is sort of like the type of thing. It is something that unfortunately as a country as a society we don't invest in we don't pay um, carers a huge amount of money all of these things cost a lot of money in terms of the paraphernalia the equipment anybody who saw Kate's program saw just how much equipment and stuff was in their house that Derek needed just to survive on a day-to-day -day basis um, but absolutely this is part of the, the patient journey through hospital and Doctor, I just want to ask you about the COVID jab that I believe today has become available on the high street, but only if you can pay for it. Yes, that's right. So just like people can pay for a flu jab in the local um, chemists and local high streets and supermarkets, you're now going to be able to go to one of the big high street chemists and buy a Pfizer covid vaccine quite a lot more expensive i have to say i think it's in the region of 90 pounds um compared to a flu jab which is normally around 10 or 15 but people can opt into a covid vaccine uh, over the age of 12 um, i think from next month from april and who are the people that you think should avail themselves of this if they have the 30 pounds because the people who are most at risk have been given the jab free in the normal manner, haven't they? So who are the people that you think should take advantage of this if they possibly can? Well, I say sort of the same thing that I would say about flu jabs, which is really for a lot of people, it's very inconvenient to be ill. Um, so I've always had a lot of patients over the years who have opted into getting a flu jab, even though um, they're not considered vulnerable. People who um, are very busy, self-employed people who wouldn't get sick pay. You've got lots of nice holidays coming up. You don't want one ruined by having COVID or flu. And I think it's the same thing. Um, people don't want to be ill. They might have been ill quite badly previously with COVID, don't want to go through that again. Got a busy year coming up, lots of things happening. You just might not want to have the inconvenience of having COVID. And you know when you get the flu jab, there's always this kind of uh, caveat, which is um, it might not prevent the strain of flu that happens to be the prevalent mm. one this year, but have it anyway because just in case kind of thing. It's mm. not the same with COVID, is it? If you have the COVID jab, you really shouldn't get COVID, or if you get it, it shouldn't be severe. Is that right? Well, we did have these different strains, didn't we? And obviously they've had to put one specific strain within within the COVID vaccine, the Pfizer one. So I'm not entirely sure how they are going to be updating that, but one would hope that it is the most recent COVID um, vaccine from the season that we've gone through that we've given our vulnerable patients. Um, so it's be the same one that is the most recent circulating strain. So hopefully um, actually prevent COVID for people and if not prevent, at least attenuate or minimise the infection somebody gets. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us, Doctor.